I'm saying the 64 properties so Mr. Noto doesn't... We should try and winnow them down prior to getting them to Mr. Noto so we don't incur legal costs. They don't incur legal costs. So uh, could you just follow up uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, receiver taxes, Mecca, and, and can we make a concerted effort to get in touch with these 64 people and explain to them that they will be in rem eligible and you don't want them and they don't want to end up in Mr. Noto's court Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the 184 is still a year away. Yeah. Right. That's 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 an. You know, and we still continue to have a problem with with delinquent taxes, but we also do collect in interest and penalties. And at the bottom uh, number, at the very bottom of that that column, the 589,884 is what we collected in interest and penalties in. Uh, tax year 2011. So it's, it's, it's substantial revenue when people pay their taxes late because the town has to guarantee the taxes to the villages and schools and to the county. So well, it's amazing how there was really no difference from one year to the next. Yeah, and our, in -rem, uh, our lien collections was very close from year to year as well, and that has to do with the constant uh, collections from the tax receiver and our in rem process is very tight at this point. Now, how do I see that? Sorry. Um, there's, we, yeah, there's other reports on collections behind this. Um, uh, and it just references. Um, okay, log go through it with you later. We don't need yeah. to keep everybody. I'll go through it with you. Thank you. Great. Thank well, you. Dave. Thank you very much, Mr. Burns. Thank you so much. Okay. Sorry. Uh, discussion. I apologize, Mr. Nowatnik. I, I uh, over, right. over, overlooked that. Oh. I'm going to preface uh, yeah. Mr. Nowatnik's presentation by saying that it was approximately a year ago uh, that uh, that I spoke of uh, of getting a, a surveillance system uh, for both uh, Crawford Park. And also for Ride Town Park, we've uh, this came up again uh, during the, the last meeting that I chaired for Ride Town Park, and um, and uh, I mentioned it to the to the board. I leaned over to Mayor French and I said, you know, this is the reason why we should have looked and still need to look into surveillance for these parks. Uh, there's been some great adjustments when it comes uh, to the park management and the staffing. Uh, who's working, who's not working, uh, some controlled areas, um, you know, where we don't have staff. And I feel that given the, uh, given the unique demographics and the limited staff, and given that we've had vandalism, uh, I think it's in our best interest to uh, protect the parks as best as we can and uh, look into a surveillance system. Right Town Park, I think, needs to be discussed. And obviously, in February, I would suggest to do that, uh, and then also uh, for Crawford Park. So, yeah. well, uh, with that introduction, uh, the first comment I'd want to make is is that this all then comes down to part of a capital program. Uh, we are not talking about insignificant numbers in this particular case. We did reach out to a security firm, and we walked the park and walked the facility and if you look at page two you'll see that uh, we're coming up with what we call an eight camera system uh, and then I can walk you through that. How much, you, how much is it? Well on the first page you'll see there we're looking at about 11.5 approximately. Uh, there may be some other odds and ends but uh, we see 12,000 as, as a rational this right park? No this is purely for Crawford Park. Do we have one for Whitetown Park? We do not as of yet. The one thing that I want to mention just in this discussion, we have to talk about uh, comparison of dollars and projects. Bishop, what? how many cameras are put in this building here? Well, in, in 10 Pearl Street, we have nine cameras here. Okay, and what did that project cost? Uh, 10 Pearl Street cost us just over $15,000. 10, 10 Pearl Street... Nine cameras, over fifteen thousand dollars. Everything's here in one building. The runs go up and down the walls over here. I understand the process because I do it at some of the facilities that I have. Right. Now, this here happens to be a very competitive price, but when you look at what they have to do 
in this package is incredibly detailed. And I mean, that actually, the camera placement, the amount of wire, the runs that have to happen. So I know you were a little shocked with the price. No, no, I, I sorry, I I'd like. I thought there was. I thought it was 150. Oh no, no, no. Sorry, so, <laughs> so I, and I'm confident that if we get other other bids, um, they're going to come in hopefully comparable, but you know, maybe a little bit more. But the key thing is that we need to open this discussion. We need to make an effort to secure these properties, yeah. and, um, and and for for the vandalism that occurred. Uh, at Rye Town Park, right. uh, for all the concerns that we have, somebody says, oh, so-and-so was illegally dumped, dumping in the dumpsters. Somebody, uh, whatever. I'd love to catch these people that vandalize our parks. I'd love to catch them on camera, right. get a license plate, and prosecute them. We, we've had, just to echo uh, Councilman Villanova's comment, we've had at least four incidents now at Rye Town Park of vandalism. Yeah. I, all, all of which have been reported to Rye PD. No, I understand. I think clearly, it, it, well, first of all, thanks for making this presentation and discussion. Um, I, you know, I think we should certainly consider this in the capital budget um, uh, this year. Maybe once we get a handle on the bridge, and certainly consider consider giving serious consideration to this. Uh, it, it seems to me there's a greater need right now at Rye Town Park than there is at Crawford Park. Um, fortunately, I guess, but uh, just because there's been more vandalism down there, there's no doubt in my mind. At Rye Town Park, it'll pay for itself immediately. And, and, and the savings from the vandalism we've, we've, we've generated down there. Um, but that, but let's, that being said, if you, if you put a similar package. Yeah, absolutely. Right down park, so. No, absolutely. And I think that the other thing is we should. That's why. And we, we should, could you? I, I don't know. I we, don't want to abuse can, of these people's time. But if it were possible to have them. Do the same kind of work, same thing up for right down break would be great. Sure. Second of all, I don't know if the friends right. Well, no, I guess they do something different. But uh, yeah, that's a wonderful suggestion. Let's 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 uh, thank you for this, and uh, we'll 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 take it up as we take up the yeah, whole I have a budget. Question. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know you're trying to get through this quickly, but no. um, the cameras that were here, did we get the monies from? Grants from well, the yeah, the the, the fifteen thousand we yeah. received a grant from the Justice Court Administration right. program, mm -hmm. so that was part of the JCAP grant. Uh, but I think Council Villanova was trying to point out that uh, that's a very compact I installation right. and right. Uh, cost us significantly more than this particular proposal. My other concern is, and that's very rare that I disagree with anything that Councilman Villanova has to say. <laughs> and I'm not in disagreement with him, but I just wanted to also keep in mind that it would be great for Crawford because we can get maybe a license plate or something, but down at the beach and even in Crawford, if some random kid with a hoodie on comes by and vandalizes, unless somebody outright knows who it is, that's yeah. not going to do us yep. any good. Yeah. Right. Like, is there a way to get some statistics on, on uh, how this could benefit us? Uh, yeah, that would be helpful. That, I think would be helpful. Once you just, well, I think if you could summarize the certainly the incidents of vandalism, right, and the cost, that would be helpful. I think that's the kind of thing uh, uh, Councilman yeah. yeah. Council's talking about. Well, I, I'd like to just quickly. No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to waste. I don't well, want to go through it. I've got okay. the package. They, right. they, we're not going to vote on it tonight. No, I'm just going to. So, so I don't. I, I just thank you. For, okay. I, just, I don't. I don't need to know where the wires are going. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> the the I mean I think it's a wonderful proposal, but I don't I don't. Uh, Next. So, uh, <laughs> assessor, we finance. We've done uh, oh, receiver tax, you. Mr. Mecca. We hope that you're. Just, like, you're not, um, for, oh, for, for Nick. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, please. Thank. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Mecca asked me to. Um, mention about the school tax which is due by the end of this month, January 31st and um, please, uh, he encourages everyone to make an effort to get this in by the 31st, postmarked by the post office not meter and mail uh, because it goes straight to the 10% penalty and for the uh, village of Rybrook uh, residents, well uh, property owners, the second installment which is one third because two thirds are due and paid in June. The last one third is due by the end of February. And notices will be sent out. And that's about it. Thank you. Yeah, so that's much. for all the school districts.
Blind Brook, Port Chester, Rhineck, and there's a few parcels in Harrison that are in the town of Rhineck. Perfect. And how about yourself? Do you have anything to report at the town clerk? No. no. Thank you so much, uh, town clerk Vespia. Yeah. And we wish you speedy recovery to uh, receive your tax mecca. Uh, Mr. Noto? No, I'm getting my report. Thank you. Uh, we've already heard from Mr. Uh, De Crescenzo. Welcome Delio. aboard. Mr. Parmi? Uh, Mr. Dilio. Exactly, Mr. Dilio. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor and Town Council. During the past month, there has been th three projects uh, completed at 10 Pearl Street, which included the men's room, ladies' room, and the ceiling tiles um, in the supervisor's office. While working on these projects, two large trees fell at Right Town Park, located along the Forest Avenue side. Our staff and John Slicka Landscaping worked together to get this emergency resolved. We had a report of vandalism at Right Town Park, which was corrected by staff. Um, and it was reported by the uh, right police. There was uh, graffiti all over the administration uh, doors right by Fred Joffrey's office. Also, there was um, criminal mischief at the right town dock. Somebody smashed the concrete barrier going to the dock, and also, uh, while I was doing the assessment, I noticed the three marine lights that we have there uh, for the boats, they were pried off and missing. So I called the police and a report was taken as well. Um, both reports were given to the supervisor's office for on file. Also I had staff um, take care of two signs were falling over um, in the park at Right Town Park, two big large Right Town Park signs. My, my staff, <coughs> excuse me, my staff is currently um, doing projects on the second floor where the, um, the old um, Port Chester offices were in the bathroom. And I'll report to you next month um, for the ongoing projects as they're completed. Wonderful. Thank you. So any questions for Mr. Leal? Nope. Thank you so much. But Mr. also Leal. the Wright Police Department are aware of the situation. Wright Town Park, like this, this morning, um, when I went down there to uh, do the trash, um, I noticed two 55-gallon drums were um, in the duck pond upside down. So, you know, I, I have to take care of that in the morning. We also, we got a report of somebody um, ripping the, sun, um, the um, snow fence where the stairs are in the duck pond. The kids were trying to go on the ice. So I have to make a, a sign that says, you know, danger, uh, thin ice. So there's a lot of activity going down at Wright Town Park, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Well, it certainly sounds that your idea about security cameras is absolutely uh, an absolute must at Wright Town Park and urgently needed. You know, and there's, there's ways where it could be set up where, you know, a camera, you know, once some, there's activity in front of it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, an alert can come up. Bishop could be notified that, you know, there's an alert, there's activity in a specific yeah. area. And then he can identify where people are. He can reach out to the Rye City Police Department or security staff that's there already and say, we have an issue in this specific area, and they can take action. You know, uh, I well, I also reached out to the, uh, the, the general manager of the American Yacht Club, and there's a security camera that's adjacent to the club that faces our right town dock. And unfortunately, that camera was knocked out during Hurricane Irene. He said to me, that if the camera was working, I could have got a clear shot. Who vandalized? There you go. Yeah. that area. So he apologized and he said the camera will be um, replaced by spring. Beautiful. So. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Mr. DeLeo. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Um, comments, questions from the commissioners, uh, Councilwoman uh, Collins? Yes, please. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank the voters for this great opportunity to serve as your council person. It's a privilege and an honor to sit up here with my uh, fellow council members, and I look forward to a very successful four years with all of you. Thank you so much. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Yes, welcome, welcome. Uh, Councilman Mendocino? Um, do we have security still at Rye Town Park right now? No. No. Yeah. Okay. That, that was part of the discussion, because yeah. they made that big change where they took the staff away. I mean, they said, we have no eyes over there. Mm -hmm. And this, this is why I, I wanted good. to push to get this done. Yeah. Sure. Definitely. Um, are we going to have our packets for our caretaker interviews soon? Uh, we uh, just finished running the ads. I think we have six people uh, have uh, applied for the job. Could you just go to the, go to the mic, please? I'm sorry, sorry, I give you a hard time tonight, but um, 
Because this is important. I'm, I'm still surprised we haven't got more. Uh, uh, just explain what it is uh, quickly. Well, we, we ran the ad for the caretaker position, which is a part-time position and uh, comes with a residence requirement uh, in the caretaker's cottage uh, along Lincoln Avenue in Crawford Park. Uh, we, the last time we did this project, we had about 20 applicants. Uh, we've advertised in the same papers. We've advertised for three issues now. Uh, it's been publicized. We've talked about it at meetings. Uh, and I am surprised that we don't have more uh, of, of uh, the uh, turnout. Yeah. Right. Well, let's interview the six. Good. Okay. Perfect. All right. So we will uh, assemble the packets and, and get them out to you. I assume that's Councilman Mendocino and Councilman Villanova. That's yes. correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watnick. Uh, anything else, Councilman Mendocino? No. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. And Deputy Supervisor Villanova. <laughs> I just uh, thank you again for your vote of confidence, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, obviously, I'm always here to help uh, the board and the residents. The, um, the I didn't want to take all of them one by one, but the administrative staff, our support staff, uh, you know, within the assessor and and, uh, and and the comptroller, accountant, legal, administrative, they have been pushed out of their comfort zone the past four years, and the level of commitment uh, had no place to go but deeper into the town of Rye, and uh, I really want to thank everybody. You know, the the You've been asked, you've been challenged by the supervisor and the board to work harder, think harder, and, uh, and produce more and, and faster uh, to help the town get to where it is now. And all of the successes that the town has had uh, really come from your department. So I want to thank you. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a, 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 a significant and uh, it makes all the difference in the world. So I want to thank you for that. And, uh, and I want to just reiterate again that the efforts that the supervisor made with uh, speaking with uh, Home Depot um, it really benefits the schools, it benefits the villages uh, and, and as, as uh, Mr. Markowitz said it also benefited the, the residents immediately uh, from a, a tax standpoint because the dialogue that they had, the honest dialogue that they had without getting attorneys involved and, and additional counsel to handle uh, this uh, saved, uh, say the taxpayers, thousands. So, uh, you know, Mr. Supervisor, you know, I, I know you're being very modest, but your efforts uh, really benefited everyone in this one specific case. The taxpayers immediately, school, village, and, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to get behind you because your enthusiasm. Uh, but more importantly now, I think that more people and the community understand what the benefits are uh, from this paradigm shift. And, and I, I, it really, it's, a, it's a very powerful. So thank you. Thank you very much for those kind of words, uh, Deputy Supervisor Manova. Very, very kind of you. Um, any, anything else? No, that's it. Thank well, you. I can't thank you enough. I mean, uh, um, you know, I, I think we've made a lot of progress in the last four years. I really want to thank the town employees. Uh, they responded very well, uh, as, as, as Deputy Supervisor Villanova suggested. We're in an uncertain environment. We're talking about possibly dissolving the town, so it creates a lot of uncertainty. And I think the town employees and town staff have responded extremely well. Um, secondly, I think, as I mentioned earlier tonight, uh, we have a, a great core team coming back in terms of support uh, people and the, in terms of uh, the the, the, the people uh, we've hired, the town attorney, the town accountant, the town uh, controller, uh, Mr. Nowatnik, uh, you know, basically got a great, uh, Mr. Trenz, you've got a very strong core team uh, that now has four years experience and we want to continue to execute uh, on our goals. I want to welcome Mr. DiCrescenzo. As superintendent, I always have we discovered this evening your job is going to be a, a full-on job. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, uh, welcome uh, and thank uh, Martha McCarty for coming this evening and for all your uh, strong service as well. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to um, uh, welcome uh, uh, once again Councilwoman uh, Collins uh, to the new, okay. new endeavor here for the next uh, four years. And I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Mendocino for all her hard work.
uh, I really enjoy working on this board, and, and, and you always make it uh, pleasant and keep us on our toes. So thank you for all your hard work. And again, I can't thank uh, Deputy Supervisor Villanova for all the strong, solid support he continues to give me in the town uh, on every day. Last thing I want to say is, um, and, it, and, and, and it is really insightful uh, understanding of town affairs and, and, and town workings. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is I, I put a letter in the Westmore News, uh, so I want us to be held to account, uh, basically outlining what we're trying to do. We want to make uh, the right town a model American community. Mr. Arcaro was out this evening. I'm not sure exactly where he is. He's probably ailing. Uh, but I want to make uh, uh, oh model American community. He's out in San Francisco. Okay, so we finally right. discovered where he was. Um, I want to make uh, right town a model American community. Uh, now, it's a lofty goal, uh, it's some big words, but ultimately we just want to, those of us on the board, uh, want to make, uh, you know, do the best we can to create a framework uh, that allows each and every uh, citizen to achieve their highest self. And uh, that obviously requires tax affordability, uh, and we're working that on several levels. That requires that each and every one of our departments, and this is the goal for the next four years, each and every one of our departments is best in class. May, is basically the, 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 the envy of every town government across New York State. And then finally, we want to do everything we can to make the quality of life in our community as good as it can be. Uh, there's a big social sector out there. There's a number of clubs. We're very fortunate to have a number of clubs like Kiwanis, Knights of Columbus, Elks Club, Rotary Club, and so on and so on, contributing to our community. We have a, 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 a in, in my think, thinking, a, a number of houses of worship uh, contributing to our community. The, the, the Park Lane, I'm sorry, the um, St. Luther, St. Paul's, was it the, uh, Sunday night? St. Paul's uh, Church, a Lutheran church on Sunday night had a wonderful, wonderful service for Martin Luther King. For those of you that weren't watching the Giants and Packers, and I apologies uh, to Mr. Noto who was a Packer fan. I'm so disappointed for you. Rough. That's okay. uh, but uh, basically, uh, for those Giants, <laughs> should it come to the Martin Luther King celebration? The, the, for those of us that you know weren't at the Giant game, it was an absolutely wonderful celebration. And what we want to try and do is with our outreach to the social sector, see if we can't coordinate. Uh, basically the various activities in the community to make certain that all the demands are, are met and see if we can't help uh, synergize in terms of making each of those uh, not-for-profit organizations each of the outreach activities of the houses of worship that much more focused and that much more coordinated. So, you know, that's the goal. Um, you know, we want to uh, aim high and hopefully we'll get, you know, fairly close and, and, and continue to serve the public. So I want to thank you for the vote of confidence to serve you for the next four years, and um, we'll, we'll work hard to do everything we can to uh, to achieve our, our model American community status. So with that, I'd like to bring the meeting to a close. Can I get right at 10 o'clock? Pretty good for uh, this uh, two hours. For you, this, it's yeah, not a bad start I'm, to the new year. Especially guess. with all those resolutions tonight. Mm -hmm. Can I'll I get a motion? Uh, adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thanks very much.